Well, good evening. Um, welcome to the second session on financial management one, week two. And we're recording this session, so be aware of that. Okay, before we start with the actual course content for tonight, um, I'm going to talk about the uh, assessment that you will have to do. Uh, it's an online submission. The detail is on call campus, but I'll just go through that quickly. Um, on between the 8th and 16th April, that you have to do it, so you have got some time. Um, the assessment comprises of two parts. The first part is an online online test on call, call campus with 60 marks and it's two hours in duration. It will be complete on call campus during the submission week. So the test structure is as follows. Section A is written questions for 60 marks. Part two consists of a practical accounting question which will be submitted on Cold Campus as an assignment submission. The practical accounting question total 40 marks is to be completed on and submitted on Cold Campus during the submission week. Okay, so the uh, first one is, the first part is uh, short questions and some discussion on the theory and theoretical side of what we have been will be doing in the next couple of weeks. The second part of the question um, where you will have to do certain transactions. Um, so it is. Uh, <clears throat> so it's, it's not that difficult. Uh, once we get to doing transactions, you'll see how it works, and that you should be able to to uh, complete those questions. Okay. So what you need to know. Describe the main forms of business organizations, which we've done in week one. Describe the key goal, financial goal of a media business, which we've also discussed. Explain the role of financial management and accounting in an organization. Explain the main functions of a financial manager. Explain the importance of non-financial manager being acquainted with the basic principles of financial management. Describe the agency problem in financial management. And list the various types of transactions that can occur during the ordinary course of business. And explain the rules of double entry. Okay, so that is what you... And in doing, you are able to outline the uses and uses of accounting information. Illustrate the accounting cycle graphically. Contrast financial management and, and management accounting. Approach the rationale for external and internal scanning. Analyze transactions on the accounting equation. Apply the rules of double entry. So that is what you must be able to do. So I'm just reading it on a different document. OK, so the assessment marks. Section A, as I said, will be 60 marks, theory and application questions, and then 40 marks is the practical application that you must be able to do. OK, when we, in the next couple of weeks, as we go through the course content, we will be able to have a bit more details on uh, on what you should be focusing on. OK, so that in a nutshell is what the assignment or assessment will be about. OK, so let's continue now with the um, content of tonight's session. Okay, the learning outcomes for the session. 
just provide a brief overview of the history of accounting, outline the users and uses of accounting information, and explain the principles of international financial reporting standards. If we look at the history of the accounting, okay, so accounting originated more than 5,000 years ago, uh, where people had to record uh, who owns what property, etc. So that is where it basically started. But the double entry accounting was developed by Fra Luca Pacioli in 1445. What he basically did, he described um, the methods used by the merchants in Venice. Now that was in the Renaissance, and Venice was one of the major ports uh, in Europe where people traded. Um, from the rest of the world came to Venice and they traded. And <clears throat> the, the merchants there uh, recorded all their transactions. And then Pacioli basically um, described that method, and that is a double entry method. Double entry method, what we mean by that is for, there's a debit and a credit for every transaction. And for every debit, there must be a credit. And for every credit, there must be a debit. Okay, so that is what the double entry system is about. He then further stated three things merchants need. In order to run a business, you need sufficient cash or credit. Credit is access to, to, to cash, because if you borrow money, um, they make money available to you. So it's just similar to having the cash. You need thorough bookkeeping, so you need to know where your money is coming from, where your money is going. So you need thorough bookkeeping, otherwise you will lose your money, you lose your stock, you lose your assets. And you need an accounting system in which to record everything. Okay, so that is the, what Pacioli said. So what we have, if we look at the double entry accounting, the important rules, Okay, we we have um, what is called assets. We've got liabilities. We've got income. We've got expenses. We've got capital, and we've got drawings. So assets; these are resources that's owned by the company or controlled by the company. And typical assets would be like your furniture, your equipment, your trading stock that you will use to trade with, and your cash in your bank. Those are assets. Okay. So assets, the principle there is, if you debit an asset, it means your assets increase. So let's say you, you, you're going to buy a furniture for a thousand rand. So you will debit your asset account called furniture. And if you debit it, it means it increases. So your assets will increase by a thousand. If you sell an asset, then you're going to credit the asset and then your assets will decrease. So assets increase on the debit side and decrease on the credit side. Now liabilities, these are commitments that the company has that they have to pay someone somewhere in the future, or currently, or in the future. So it is just the opposite of an asset. If we debit a liability, we reduce the liability. In other words, if you owe the bank 10,000 Rand, and you pay the 1,000 Rand, your bank, sorry, your liability, you're going to debit it with 1,000 Rand. So the, your balance will now be 10,000 less 1,000 it decreases. If you borrow another 5,000 Rand, you're going to credit the liability, and then your liabilities increase. When we start doing accounting entries, you will see how this works, but these are the basic rules. Okay, if we look at income, income, that is the money that you get from your sales, your revenue. Um, so income, Again, similar to assets, if you, sorry, similar to liabilities, um, if you debit it, your income, 
it reduces, and if you credit uh, your income, it increases. Okay. Expenses is the same as assets. If you debit the expense, it increases. And if you credit the expense, it decreases. Expenses are things like your salaries that you pay, your rent that you pay, um, your telephone. Uh, those are all expenses that you incur. Your purchases that you stock that you're buying, those are expenses. So if you debit the expense, it increases, it plus, and if you credit the expense, it reduces. Capital, okay, what is capital? Capital is the money, the shareholders or the owner of the business um, in, pays into the business. That is contribution to the business. <coughs> so capital again, if you debit the capital account, it reduces. If you credit the capital account, it increases. <coughs> if you take the drawings, drawings, that is uh, not the pictures that people draw. Uh, drawings is the money that the owners take out of the business. The drawings, um, if you debit the drawings account, um, it increases, and if you credit the drawings account, it decreases. Okay, so those are the um, the, print the rules of double accounting uh, entries. Okay. So let's have a look at. We said that we need to record the information. So what, who are the users of the financial information? Okay, we have investors. Those are people that invest money in the business. They will want to use financial information. Our employees in the labor unions, they want to use financial information. Lenders of money, that's institutions that lend money to the, the business, they use the financial information. Suppliers, that's people that you buy from for your stock. So those are the suppliers, they use financial information. Customers, they also use financial information. Government as well, the public in general, and then management. Okay, the question is, what do they want to do with this information? Okay, so let's have a look. I'll put this little table here. Um, if you look at the um, to the far right, you'll see there's an internal and external. Okay, so internal that means that's within the company, and those are the owners, the managers, and employees. They are inside the company, and they want the financial information. Now, why do they want the information? Okay, the first reason why owners would want the information is they would determine um, whether the organization is profitable and whether it's financially viable. So otherwise they will not want to invest further in the business. So that is the reason why they look at the financial information. Managers, they look at the information because they want to ensure that the business runs efficiently. And if there are problem areas, they can identify it through the um, financial figures that they see, and they can try and solve the problem areas. And so that's the, what managers want to do with the information. Then you have employees. Okay, why employees want to look at the information is they want to determine whether an employer can provide stable employment in the future. Okay, I must uh, just um, 